recent 45-day CGM, that's continuous glucose monitor experience, Mm. why did you decide to use a continuous glucose monitor and what did you learn from that experience? Why? Because I'm kind of a bit obsessed over like the physiology of my own body and what and what are the things that drive that physiology, whether it be sleep or cold plunging or fasting or diet? And having the ability to test and learn around my dietary choices was in- so intriguing to me. And once it was available and I knew it was out there, I reached out to Frank Littman, who's a doctor, I kind of a friend and a doctor that I go to see in New York. And he he figured out a way to get a CGM on my arm, and uh, so I did it just sheer out of sheer curiosity and and a desire to just kind of like, you know, it's so cliche to say this, but just kind of optimize my diet a bit and understanding blood sugar. I totally buy into level blood, you know, keeping blood sugar levels steady. I think is hugely critical to all kinds of health. So what did you learn? What were the biggest takeaways? I'll tell you the craziest, biggest takeaway that I feel like should be on that billboard you might ask me about. I, you know, It won't, but, but it's like, take a walk after you eat. It is astonishing. How can it be that I've never heard that in my whole life? Yeah. That should be like taught in first grade. <laughs> because the effect of it, the effect of it is insane. And and I saw it firsthand. And I think that the folks at levels are seeing it more and more and more because it's get that this message is getting out as they ac- accumulate data. But the power of a 14-minute walk to reduce the spike of your blood sugar, regardless of what you eat, is extraordinary. Wow, no kidding. And so you used levels in this experiment. I did. Mhm. That's incredible. Why 14 minutes? Is that the length of your favorite Guns N' Roses? No, I'm just Did I say 14 or 15? I just like a short <laughs> a short mean, you know, just a little walk. It, okay. you know, 10 <laughs> minutes, maybe 5 minutes. I didn't really test the length of the walk, but it's like it was nothing severe. It was just It's not exercise. It's not like going to the gym or doing push-ups. It's just going for a walk around the block a few yes. times. Yes. Totally chill, walk around the block, and I couldn't believe it. And I, I, it's it's amazing to me. So highly, highly recommend that it should be taught everywhere because it's incredibly effective. That's wild, man. You know, I haven't thought. You just prompted something to come to my mind, which I haven't thought of <laughs> in a few decades. And I'm going to apologize to anyone who hears this and understands kind of understands what I'm saying, uh, because I'm going to probably butcher it because my tones are off these days. But there's a, there's a, I want to say, a, well, maybe a, it's not so much a proverb, it's a, an expression in Mandarin Chinese, which is something like, fan hou bai bu zhou, nang huo dao jiu shi jiu, which is, if you walk a hundred steps after you eat, you will live to be 99. Oh, wow. That's literally the expression. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's just like, huh, turns out a few thousand years of trial and error. Yeah. How did you find that expression, Tim? I mean, I was living in China and uh, I, this is a long time ago. I mean, this is 1996. So this is back when Beijing was like people's liberation, green army jackets in the winter, these green jackets and bicycles, right? So Beijing is a different city now. And I was there for six months at two universities, and I mean, that was kind of the last time I studied Chinese was around that time, but you just saying that prompted that to pop up in my brain, which is wild. I'm telling you, there's there's a lot there for sure. I mean, that was my experience and many others, and it's just, I find it fascinating and sitting here in 2021, and like, I've been kind of embedding myself and trying to learn about, you know, nutrition and, and health. And, you know, we, we have some mutual friends and people we follow and, uh, and it's just amazing to me that I've never, I've never come across that. Yeah. How wild. What else, any other insights 
that you gleaned from your experiment? Yep. The other big one was to combine the macronutrients. Like if you if you just eat a if you just eat a carb or a, a, a complex carb or a simple carb by itself as opposed to eating it alongside fat and protein. So this idea of like a well-rounded plate, that made a huge difference as well. And one night in particular, I uh it was it was a fun it was a fun game too having this thing on my arm by the way. So one night I you know, I went and I had a business dinner at Hearth and um and I was kind of like I approached it with this idea of like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to like eat everything and I'm going to eat a lot of it. Right. So I went kind of nuts and I just ate all the things like garlic breads and wine and cocktails and, and desserts. And like, I just, I probably consumed 3000 calories. Right. And I was like, <laughs> I, I want to see if I could make my levels like blow up. And the astounding thing was because it was like a lot of fiber and a lot of protein and a lot of fat, in addition to all the bad simple carbs and sugars and wines and all that, I didn't spike that high. And I think it's because having fiber and having fat and having protein alongside these bad players of simple carbs and sugar helps mitigate that spike. Huh. Did you exercise earlier in the day by any chance? Do you know? Yeah, my exercise is always, I don't, I'm, I'm an I'm a exercise first thing kind of guy. Yep. Although my lifestyle is active because I live in, you know, in New York, I'm always on my feet and I'm walking a lot, right? So that must play into things as well. Fascinating. It was. I loved having that thing on my arm. I kind of want to do it again because there's so much cool testing and learning you can do. 